Don't hang up that phone. We have found what you are looking for. Welcome to the Five Minutes with an RCDD podcast. Well, seems how we're pulling Category 6A, the most powerful twisted pair there is in the world. You gotta ask yourself this one question. Did I pull 295 feet or 300? Well, do you feel lucky? Do you, punk? In this podcast, you will learn the differences between a 66 and a 110 punch tool, the proper way to install and support cable, along with terminating and testing parameters. What exactly does RCDD stand for? Really can't do diddly? Or some guy that's just sitting around in a chair making podcasts? So join us as we talk about the world of telecommunications from ISP to OSP, copper to fiber, design to installation. Now send the new guy to the truck for a bucket of dial tone and the cable stretchers while you listen to an informative program on the ever-changing industry of telecommunications. Now here's your host, Chuck Bowser, RCDD. Welcome to episode three of Five Minutes with an RCDD podcast. Today's subject, certifications. Are they worth it? So we're going to cover what is the difference between knowledge versus experience. We're going to talk about some of the industry organizations out there that offer these certifications and some of the certifications that they teach or certify you in. We're also going to cover other considerations that you may want to consider when getting your certification. And then we have a few questions for you at the end. Let's talk about certification and knowledge. Do you have knowledge or do you have experience? Well, hopefully you said, well, Chuck, I've got both. Because there's a difference between knowledge and experience. So if you go to dictionary.com and look at what knowledge is, it says acquaintance with the facts, truths, or principles as from study or investigation. It defines experience as a particular instance or personally encountering, undergoing something. So you can, you can do something. You can t- terminate a Category 5E cable, Category 6 cable, and you can know not to untwist those pairs, but do you have the knowledge as to why not to untwist those pairs? That's the difference between knowledge and experience. I'll give you another example. We'll talk about tie wrapping cables and ask a young technician why they should not over tighten a tie wrap. But they're going to tell you, well, my boss said not to, right? Well, if you over tighten a tie wrap, and you know that's going to crush the cable jacket and that's going to affect the cable performance, well, then you have the knowledge that goes along with that. Like I said, hopefully you have both. So what are your options, right? Well, luckily, if you happen to work for a union and you're in an area that they do joint apprenticeship training because they have some really good classes, you can get taught. You can also pursue higher education. A lot of technical colleges offer classes in computer networking, computer cabling. Or you might be lucky if somebody might mentor you. They take you under the wings and they teach you everything. Or the last method is, you know, entry-based certifications. It's a cheaper alternative than going to a four-year college and learning how to do all that stuff. But it's still going to cost some money. It depends on who's going to pay it. Are you going to pay it or is your employer going to pay it? What is an industry-based certification? Well, there's two main kinds. There's the manufacturer certification. But those manufacturer certifications are generally only good for their products. Unless the manufacturer certification that you're taking, they take great pride in their training class and don't make it a dog and pony show and show you their newest connectors for the next hour. Or you can do industry certification, right? Now, which industry certification should you get? Should you get a cable certification, a copper cable certification, a fiber cable certification? What about AV? What about certifications in how to install electronics? Or maybe even design certification, like an RCDD or an outside plant specialty. Again, these are all certifications that you can get, and there's pre-qualifications in order to get them or to sit down for their exams. So the major certifying bodies for telecom are BIXI, Building Building Industry Consulting Service International, SETI, C-E-D-I. I can't remember what that stands for, top of my head. I have to look it up. FOA, the Fire Optic Association. And probably the well most known of all those is, is going to be Bixie. So they have several different installation certificates. They have the Installer 1, the Installer 2 Copper, the Installer 2 Fiber, and the Technician. These are all their installation certifications. So the pre-qualifications for the Installer 1 is basically anybody can sit down and take that test. And, and it's actually a two-part test. You have a written test that's got 75 questions. And then you have a hands-on where you've got to perform six tasks in 20 minutes. 
Now, the cost for actually doing that is it's a $335 application fee and $135 exam fee. So you can spend almost $500 just to take the test. But if you're new to the industry, I also suggest that you take the class, which is going to cost you over $1,000. That's going to better your chances in winning that. Once you get certified, once you pass the test, that certification is good for three years. Now, you do have to get uh, you get a what's called an OJT book, an on-the-job training book that you got to have somebody sign off on each of those tasks as you go through. And then once you get to the end of your three-year certification, it's not renewable. You have to actually go up to the next level, which is going to be either Installer 2 Copper or Installer 2 Fiber. They don't allow you to stay at that Installer 1 level. So the Installer 2 Copper, again, same fees. It's going to be 335 for the application, 135 for the exam fee, again, 500 bucks. And if you take the class, again, there's another you know, over $1,000. But you do have to have at least one year of experience to take that test. And the exam for the Installer 2 is a little bit different. you got to have to pass 100 questions in 120 minutes. You also have to do six tasks in 20 minutes, but they're not the same six tasks that you do for the Installer 1. Again, your duration is going to be three years, and uh, when you get done, you can actually renew as your Installer 2 certificate. They also have an Installer 2 Fiber, Again, same fee structure, going to cost you $470 combined, and same 100 questions, not 120 minutes to do that, but now you can also have that certification in fiber. The next step up from there is going to be the technician certification. And you notice the pricing structure is going to be the same for all of Bixie certifications, or the installer certifications at least. It's going to be $470. But you got a 100 question exam that you got passed in 120 minutes, and you have to be a, have, to have a documentable three years of of the experience in order to sit for that exam. But let's say that you don't want to get certified as a cable installer. You want to go into, you know, you want to be a project manager. You want to be an estimator. You want to go into installing telephone systems or, or network equipment. Well, then you might want to look at one of the design certifications, like the RCDD, the Registered Communications Distribution Designer. That one you need more experience, and it's a lot harder test. Matter of fact, it actually took me two times to pass that test to get my RC certification. But they have other ones. They have the Registered Telecommunications Project Manager, the RP, RTPM, Outside Plant Designer, and also a Data Center Design Consultant class that you can actually get certified in data centers. I am in the process of finishing up my data center class now with Bixie. Not the certification class, but one of the others. But Bixie's not the only show in town. There's Again, I told you there's SETI, right? They're a cabling and infrastructure technician, or the CIT, it basically it replaced their old electronic system certificate, the EST. So for the eligibility, again, you can come right out of you know somebody another industry, but you do have to sign or agree to their code of conduct. It's going to cost you $150 if you're a member, $200 if you're a non-member. There's a written test for 120 questions. It takes you two hours, or they allow you two hours. And your certification is good for three years as well. When it comes to renewal, you do have to submit your renewal and re-sign your code of conduct and pay 60 bucks. So the next step up from them is going to be the Integrated Systems Technician, the IST. That replaced their old Electronic Systems Certified Technician, the ESC-T. And you have to have that entry-level certification as a prerequisite in order to sit for the IST certification. You have to have one to three years' experience. It's going to cost you 200 bucks. See, their pricing structure is a little different from Bixie. The higher up you go, the more you have to pay in your fees. The test is 150 questions, and they give you up to three hours, and again, your certification is good for three hours, or three years. When it comes time to renew, again, you got to sign that same code of conduct again to pay another 60 bucks. And then they have another one called the Electronic Systems Certified Networking Specialist, the ESC-N. You have to have experience with wireless home networking, including advanced network techniques such as VLANs and, and quality of service and remote access. CDA does actually recommend that you pass the ESC-T exam before you, and have at least two years of experience before you sit down. They actually request that you have residential experience before you sit down and take the ESC-N exam. And then they have the e Electronic Systems Certified Designer Certification to help design these products and creating the schematics and forming budgets and developing uh, the programming that needs to go along with those systems. So they have them as well. But they're more, their systems are, uh, they actually do have a, cable certification too now just now thinking about it but I didn't write it down in my notes so the majority of their certification is really going to be more geared towards the audio video world than the structure cable world and then you have the fiber optics association the FOA it's it's the home of one of my favorite web pages fiberu.org 
It's a free online self-study program, and I highly recommend to anybody who wants to learn more about fire. It's free. You just got to spend some time. You know, we as technicians, we're great at going out and buying the latest, greatest tools, especially if they have Chrome on them. But we're not so good at investing in knowledge, right? And the problem with knowledge is you can never leave it in the ceiling like you can with your tools. Always offer knowledge over tools. So you can gain the certification either by attending one of their approved schools taught by industry experts. As a matter of fact, the whole FOA was created by a bunch of certified installers. So you can work, or you can also work towards that certification based on your industry experience. So they have a couple of different certifications. They have the uh, certified fiber optic specialist. They have the certified fiber optic specialist design. So that's going to be the the D stands for. It's focused on the design. They also have a certified premise cabling technician, the CPCT, which is going to be focusing on cabling for you know lands, uh, building automation security, and um, building management and stuff like that. So they, that's going to be more similar to the Bixie certification than the fiber one. They also have other certifications too, which include specialties such as outside plant, splicing, connectors, testing, fiber to the home, fiber to the antenna, and also data centers. And there's just a few of them. They have a whole big list of them. So what other certification you may want to consider? Well, let's say that you decide that you don't want cabling to be your full-time career. You're only using this as a stepping stone to get to another industry, another industry in the communications industry, right? You might want to be installing you know, network switches. You might want to be installing telephone switches. So a lot of people just use cabling to get there. I think they make a better PBX technician or a better network um, engineer if they do have cabling experience. A couple different places you can get certified. Microsoft has a, a developer, administrator, and a data engineer, and security engineer, just to, again, name a few that you can get certified in. Cisco has their certifications. You can get their CCNA, that stands for their Certified Network Associate, or you can get one of their CCNP certifications, such as Enterprise Security, Collaboration Service Provider, and those again, just naming a few of them. So there's lots of certifications out there. Now, what does this really mean? Let's say that you take my advice and you get one of these certifications. Don't become a snob just because you you know you get this certification. Don't think you can look down on other cable installers. A lot of guys who go to the electronic world, you know, they kind of look down on the cable guys. But I got news for you, electronic guys. Without us, those cable guys, your stuff wouldn't work. Cabling might be easier to install than network equipment, but and it's not a rocket science by any stretch of the imagination. But it does take dedication and commitment to excellence. And also tenacity to install it so it performs as the way that it's expected. So I guess what you really got to consider is when we talk about certification, what is your end goal? Do you want to stay in communications? Or, back up a step. Communications. We are in the communications industry. But saying you're in the communications industry is like saying you're in the automotive industry. Do you sell cars? Do you design cars at a, at a car manufacturer? Or, or are you uh, an auto mechanic at a dealership? They all work in the automotive industry. Same thing with communications. Right. You have cable installers, you have PBX technicians, you have network engineers, project managers, estimators, salespeople. We all work in the communications industry. So what is your end goal? Are you using this as a stepping stone to get to another field? Okay. And also, do you want to become an expert in your field? Because there are some advantages to becoming an expert. And I hate that term expert because there are no experts in our industry because our industry changes way too fast. So part of that factor of the decision process is now that you know what your end goal is, is who's paying for that certification? Hopefully your employer's paying for it, but not always. Some employers, though, they may make you sign a training agreement. And that training agreement is going to say that for a certain period of time, it's usually like one or two years, that if you leave before that time, it's like you got to pay back a portion or maybe even some of all the training costs. So you got to factor that as well, too, because if you take that training and they make you sign that training agreement, that's a question you want to ask ahead of time. Am I going to be required to sign a training agreement? Because that might change your decision. But if you if it's a company that you plan on retiring from, then what difference does it make? Just take the class. Well, again, so if they're not paying for it, then, then are you paying for it? You might, you're, do you want to go out and get a loan to get this class? Again, like I told you, the Bixie classes are anywhere from one to 1000 to 2500 depending on which class you pick. Right? Get a little loan for that and pay for that class. Or you might save up and pay cash for it. Or sometimes they offer grants. At least when you pay for it, you don't have that training agreement. You can take that knowledge with you. 
But on the, another fact you got to consider is once you get your certification, is you have to maintain that certification. That means you have to get continuing education credits. Now, every one that I just mentioned earlier, they all have different requirements. Now, I'm more familiar with the Bixie one, so you have to get a certain amount of continuing education credits every three years to get to maintain that certification. Some of them will actually make you attend conferences. Again, that's an expensive thing because it's 500 bucks, 600 bucks just to pay for the fee to attend the conference. If that conference is in a different part of the country, then you got to fly there and there's a cost and hotel and food. But if your company's paying for it, then, then go for it. Now, how does an employer view somebody who has certifications? I can speak for this on both sides because I've been on the side, on the, the installer side, and then I got my certification. Then I've also been in a hiring manager where I had to look at stacks of resumes. First thing that most companies do is certifications do mean something to them because a lot of times when they're responding to bids, in the RFP documentation, the request for proposal, that's the document from the customer that says what their expectations are, quite often they will tell you, you have to have a certain number of certified technicians or RCDDs or maybe even manufacturer certifications. That does not mean, though, that you're automatically better than somebody without a certification. I know a lot of people in our industry and I know some people that just, they are sharp as a whip when it comes to cable and installation, but they're not good test takers. They're just afraid of tests. But I also know some people who have taken certification classes and gotten certified that don't know Jack Diddley. So just because you have a certification does not mean you're more knowledgeable than someone who doesn't have a certification. Now, as an employer looking at resumes, if everything else is equal, you know, same amount of experience, same type of experience, and you got the same good references coming back saying these, this is a good technician, and the only difference is one might have a certification, that could be the extra piece of straw on that hay bale that's going to make them lean towards you to make that decision. Again, it's just it just documents to me as a hiring manager, it just tells me that you have the ability to make a goal, work toward that goal, and achieve that goal. That doesn't mean that just because you got that certification from, you know, FOA, that you're good at terminating fiber because you might be a, good, smart, a book smart student, but not somebody with the life skills or actual skills in the field. Again, but that is a certification. That certification does have some value. It does, that certification doesn't show me, as a hiring manager, your work ethic or your ability to deal with a, an irate customer who's ticked off because something happened. Again, it's just a shows that you have the knowledge on how to do it. It's just another factor that decision process doesn't guarantee anything. So what has my experience shown? Pursuing certifications are well worth the investment and the time. It is, for me, it has opened doors that previously were not available to me because I didn't have an RCD certification or I didn't have, you know, other, other certifications. Even though I may have been easily qualified to fill that position, again, that piece of paper sometimes makes the difference. It also increased my value and made me more money over the years. But don't let that make you think that just because you went out and you got that certification, the very next day you're worth a $3 an hour raise. You're just more valuable to your employer. And also, please don't use that to go get hired by another company, especially if your employer paid for it as well. So certifications do have a good reason to have them. So the question I have for you is, Do you have any certifications? If you do, what certifications do you have? And how have they impacted your career? You know, did they allow you to get a position that you didn't have or make more money or pursue a job that you didn't have? Would you recommend someone pursuing a certification? Would you recommend that they do that? And earlier we talked about mentoring. I do like to mentor people. I have two slots open for people, for two people that who want to be mentored. Now there is going to be a, an interview process and a, questionnaire that you're going to have to fill out because I want to make sure that you're dedicated to learning because if I'm going to put energy into you, I want to make sure that you have energy to get through it as well. So I have two positions open for my mentoring program. And if you want that, make sure you email me and I'll send you that information. So tune in in the next episode when we talk about a series, a mini-series. The mini-series is basically going to explain how, what's the difference between Category 5E, Category 6, and Category 6 at cable. But I'm going to go all the way down to the basics. I'm going to start off with first the sinusoidal wave and bits and bytes. The next one after that will be about encoding schemes, how we can put those, that data across cabling. And then the final one will be cable ratings, explaining the difference between those cables. So it's going to be a mini-series. So until then, cable on. Cable on.